Welcome back to another Learn Layer segment. We are going to continue our conversation with Joe Kerrigan as he prepares for his CISSP exam. So, Joe, yep. you had homework since the last time we talked. I did. Okay. Wait, wait. How, took, did, did you do it and how'd it go? I took the diagnostic. I did not get a 96% on this one. Okay. I okay. got a 68%, oh, which is somewhere that's... between okay and ecstatic at right. 75%. So I'm okay. a little closer to ecstatic. Good. So I'm Good. pleased with Good. how I did. Good. But I'm not ecstatic. I'm okay with it. And Joe, before we talk about your specific results, I do want to kind of uh, give one word for the average studier because, you know, we already established Joe has a lot of years of experience. Right. You're a teacher. You know this stuff well. So I was expecting a, a good score. But I want to give a shout out for maybe the people who, you know, scores are not going to be so high or not getting a 68% or getting a 25% or don't have 14 years of experience. That's okay. A diagnostic is just a diagnostic. Think of it as like learning about yourself, right? right. It's just data. And it, all it's there is to make you realize how much work you have. It's not supposed to make you feel bad, so don't feel discouraged. It's just a number, and you're just learning about yourself. Where you start is not where you end. So, Joe, back to you and your 68%. Right. Um, per domain. Per domain. How did you do? Nice breakdown. Well, uh, initially, I said the domain I was going to have the most trouble with would be security and risk management, mm -hmm. but uh, I did pretty well. I got a 73.91% in that one. Nice. Uh, and much to my dismay... Uh, software development security, yeah. I came in at around 66. Now, there's only three questions about that, right, so I missed, right. but I missed two of them. Now, sometimes real-world practical experience can get in the way of getting the right answer on the test, and that's because IEC squared and CSSP with some of this content have their own sort of reality. So that's why somebody like me, who has no years of experience as a practitioner— can have CSSP, SISM, CEH. Like, think about it. I've never done any ethical hacking. How am I a certified ethical hacker? I got a 93% on that exam, right? That doesn't <laughs> right. make sense. So, look, I, I mean, the major flaw is that they're multiple choice exams, right? right. Yeah. Written with a perspective from the test maker, yes. which might be a different perspective than a practitioner. And if we follow this back to our first segment we did on this, where where I talked about how I was told that, that, that Hopkins does not value certifications, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's why yeah. one of the reasons they don't value certification sure. and they value research over it is because research is actually a, a better demonstration of your skill set, Yep. right? It's peer-reviewed. Yep. This is, you know, like you said, this is a multiple choice test. Now, it does demonstrate some basic qualifications. And uh, and not to diminish the value of a security uh, or any certification to, to a practitioner of any field, mm -hmm. there are a lot of places where you have to have these in order to get hired. Mm -hmm. I also think what would be helpful, Joe, if you don't mind, is maybe we could actually pick a question from the diagnostic that you got wrong. Sure. And just sort of, you know, walk through the content and maybe think about what you were thinking and how we could, you know, make sure next time you get it right. Yes, absolutely. So we've pulled up question number 16 on your test. And this is one that you got wrong, but we're going to try to figure out what happened. We're going to diagnose right. the, di the diagnostic and see what happened. Okay. So... This question is a very short one in the sense that, to use some technical test-taking language, the question stimulus is the question stem. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes you get a long question that's a lot of detail. This one's very short and straightforward, so it's good for podcasting. Right. But it says, which of the following would be the most expensive DRP testing method? Okay, stop. This right. is, we're already going to get into some test A strategy. We're already, we're on the diagnostic. I still want to talk strategy. Okay. When you get a question like this, before just reading the answer choices, we want to think about the question stem, what they're asking, and try to see if we can do some pre-work before we get to the answer choices. So, Joe, my question back to you is twofold. Number one, what, like, if you had to reword the question in your own words, what are they asking? And number two, they have an acronym in there, which is unfortunate. Right. What does DRP mean? Disaster recovery plan. Okay. And right. so what are they asking? 
They're asking what would be the most expensive way of testing a disaster recovery plan. Got it. So uh, how, I mean, there are a number of different ways you can test a disaster recovery plan, tabletop exercises, things mm-hmm. of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, which is actually one of the answers here is, is can I, should we start reading the answers now? Sure, So sure. one of the answer A is actually structured walkthrough, which okay. is what a tabletop exercise sure. would be. sure. On its face, compared, like, without having anything to compare it to. Right. Would a structured walkthrough or tabletop be, quote, expensive? That's a good question. I, I it, First off, who's going to be in there? You have to get a bunch of people in the room. Yeah, that's right? expensive. You got a and lot that, of salaries can, in there. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of dollars in salary in <laughs> yeah. there. It, maybe if you have the CEO in there, it can get expensive. Okay. Um, but, you know, by the same token, this is part of their jobs, yeah. right? So it's already factored in the cost. So you're yeah. not incurring any additional cost by doing this. Um, okay. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I would I would say that there is a labor cost, sure. but it's not not stopping anybody from doing anything else. Sure. It, it, it's, it's not like it could be any different than a different type of meeting. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it, it would be just like an all-day meeting. Yeah. So the next one says DRP review. Right. What 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 is what is that? That's essentially like a document review. Uh, okay. I used to do these all the time when I was writing technical manuals for right. uh, for government agencies, you know, and you had to write them very meticulously, mm-hmm. right? And and a and a disaster recovery plan is going to be no different. You're gonna you're gonna have to write something so that. Somebody who picks it up who hasn't seen it before or hasn't seen it in six months mm-hmm. can read it and go, okay, it's clear what I need to do here. Got it. Um, so I think this is probably the least expensive. Okay, so so this of, is probably an answer choice that we can safely throw out. Throw, we, dismiss. We can get rid of it. So now there's two left. There's parallel processing mm-hmm. and complete business interruption. Correct. So complete business interruption I kind of disregarded this, as, which is the correct answer, yeah. as an invalid choice because you're not going to do a complete... Why would you disrupt your business to do a disaster recovery plan assessment? I mean, I guess you could. The, but this is what I'm talking about. This, I, lo- I love it. This is so meta. We right. were talking about the real world versus the exam world, right? Right. They are saying in this hypothetical world, yeah, you might not want to do it, but it would be the most expensive. And right. in fact, that might be another reason not to do it. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be too that's, expensive. That's an excellent point because yeah. you're going to lose. If you, first off, are you in a, a kind of business where you can say, all right, everybody, we're going to be down for three days while we do uh, a <laughs> right. do a disaster recovery plan exercise? Yeah. I mean, Amazon yeah. will never say that sentence. Sure. Right? Sure. <laughs> So, Joe, as we wrap up this sort of mini session going through your diagnostic exam, what is one thing that you learned? E- even just going through the like, you know, the 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 question itself, is there anything that you did hear or learn from this question that you got wrong that is going to change or impact how you approach the next question? I don't no, right now, I, I'll tell you what it does impact. Mm-hmm. It does impact the way I'm going to think about the material as I'm going through mm-hmm. it and the level of specificity that they're looking for. And if they're looking for these linguistic specificities, mm-hmm. like, okay, what is the most expensive way? Well, yeah, shutting your business down is pretty expensive. <laughs> Nobody likes to do that. <laughs> um, okay. So basically, if I could say it back to you, you're basically going to be really careful with making sure that you're kind of thinking like the test maker. Correct. You got to get in their brain space, in yeah. their mindset, think about it from their perspective, not necessarily your perspective as the practitioner or test taker. Yes, that's correct. I'm going to be thinking like them. Excellent. So we're trying to think like them. Yeah, that's, that's right. Maybe that's I right. will not be thinking like them. We'll <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to think like that. That's a scary <laughs> place to be. Right. Just kidding, IC Square. We know we know we love you. We're we're yeah. official training partners with IC Square. So you know yes, we're, we we're love friends you very with much. Them. That's right, that's right. Um and you too, Isaka, and come to you in the EC Council. Anyway. <laughs> so Joe, uh keep up the good work, keep up the studying. Uh, next time we meet, we'll talk a little bit more about how your studies have been going um, now that you have the data to actually start with the study. So good luck. Thank you.